Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems and today's system is from the user uh, Fa Falix in Discord so massive thank you to them for sending their system. Without further ado, let's get into this. It has a pretty cool thumbnail this one, there it is, the Myra and Mina system. So let's go ahead and see what do they have prepared for us here. Okay, hello. I really like that thumbnail actually, that one does look pretty cool. Yeah, there it is, very nicely custom made actually. Right, so... Here's an experimental system that I worked on for a while. It evolved over three years when I got used uh, uh, when I got used to get a feel for making moons with orbital resonances. When the terraforming update came out, I ended up making this system to practice making oceans with different materials. Very nice. Most of the planets include remarks on any interesting behaviours they have on their moons have. The gas giants have a regular moon to trace out their spheres of influence. The system is stable and can run up to 24 days a second on my somewhat average PC. Yeah, very nice. It actually runs as well. We like that. Cool, right, so Myra, red giant, 8 times larger than the sun, 1.7 times the mass, there he is, very nice. Okay, first of the planets, T Terizera here, pretty hot looking. The closest planet has a soaring temperatures and volcanic activity which creates an extremely thick atmosphere of vaporised rock with some SO2 and CO2. So not exactly what you'd be, that's a pretty hellish looking world, oh yeah. Next up, we've got Acheron over here. A planet on the verge of habitability. Water collected on the surface and has formed oceans which are prevented from boiling off the heavy or heavy nitrogen atmosphere. Very nice. Has a moon as well. Got a nice, interesting colour, that one, actually. Got two moons, little asteroid ones, okay. Then we have Kedra over here. A cloudy Earth-like planet with two moons and a rather eccentric orbit that resulted from gravitational influence from its neighbours. Okay. There's one of the moons as well. And a second moon there. Okay. So Kendra has a 1-6 resonance with Arcea, 3-5 with Enzenra and 5-18 with Ar Aru. I didn't tend to make any of these. I placed some close enough facts and Okay, nice. Tease some of the next planets out. So next up we're heading to Olin's. Which is here. A dwarf desert planet with many small moons left over from a massive collision with its neighbour, Zivan. Its extreme axle tilt leads to much of the planet being cold, while north and south poles occasionally experience near boiling temperatures as they face the sun. Nice. So there it is. Okay, got a lot of moons flying around there as well. So now we have Ezenra over here. There it is, nice pinky purple atmosphere there. Cold planet with sulfur dioxide lakes, ammonia, and argon atmosphere, and strange forms of life on its surface, or strange life forms on its surface. Nice, that's the one in the thumb now, isn't it? Of the uh, image up here. Yeah, that definitely is. Nice. And some moons as well. Ah, that's the orange moon from the farm. Oh, this one over here. Hey. Nice. So it also has the orbital resonances as well. Very nice. Uh, next up, we have Marin, which is here. Another purple uh, or magenta colour one, I should say. An ocean well covered in sulfur dioxide and sparse islands and two dancing moons. That's where are those dancing moons? Oh, yeah, okay. Similar orbits. Very nice. So their horseshoe orbits were inspired by Saturn's moon, Epimemus and Janus. They switch orbits every 84 Earth days. Pretty awesome. Okay. For next up, we've got RR Rule over here. First gas giant orbiting mirror. It has, a, it has a large family of small moons, some of which have entered resonance, while others lead to lead chaotic lives. Still lead chaotic lives. So we've got a lot of orbital resonances here as well. So Abriel, Halib and XR have a 4 to 6 to 15 resonance, uh, a result of the inner pair being 2 to 3 and the outer pair being 2 to 5. Uh, Halika and Rizul follow tagpole orbits around their respective... Uh, Lagrange points. Their behaviour is similar to Marin's moons, but this doesn't. Uh, but this time, the inner moon doesn't go all the way around the planet and catch up to the outer moon. Very nice. 
Very technical. I like it. So there we go. Looking good. Lots of moons around here as well. Sweet. So now we're moving to Arcea over here. The studio size planet has a sparse neighborhood occupied by three massive moons that can support all atmospheres. Cool. Okay, so the first one is... Uh, where are we? Luron over here? So Luron... Uh, Luron include ammonia oceans. Um, Van, Van Ra, also ammonia oceans. Where's, so where's Creon? Where, where's that one? Is that further out? There it is. Creon has a thin nitrogen atmosphere. While the two inner moons have a vast ammonia. Okay. Nice. We've got more uh, little moons in those areas as well. Very cool. And then a bigger widespread system further out. I guess these are all just asteroid moons, aren't they? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Then we have Tazia. Tazia. Similar to Neptune blue in colour. It's an ice shape mostly made of water. It's more massive than Arcea, but is about half its size. A large moon happened to wander too close, which is of the origin of Tazia's inner moons with their eccentric orbits. In contrast to the inner moons, their four outer moons are neat and orderly. It also captured a methane-rich dwarf planet, Lydia, along with its moon, into a distant retrograde orbit. Okay. Lydia. There it is. Nice. And it's moon as well. Hey, there you go. So a captured, captured world, now a moon. And the moon has its own moon. Very nice. And there's the other moons as well. Anything of significance? Let's have a quick peek. Got this one over here, Fira. That one's a little larger. So larger outer moons, as we can see. There you go. There's Lydia. There's a few more further out asteroids as well. Very nice. Okay, so now we're heading on to the second star, which is Mina. There's an massive asteroid belt between uh, Mira as well. Here it is. A small star. Six times the size of Jupiter and two thirds the mass of the Sun. Okay. Next up, we have Tanris here. A scorching world tidal lock with Mina. There is enough heat flow through the atmosphere to make the night side terribly hot despite never seeing its sun. Oh, there you go. Uh, we have ha Halma over here. Extreme hot dwarf planet which is spicy and moon of Tanris. Okay. Has a, a quasi satellite Tanris. I gave it a 5 to 1 spin orbit resonance as well. Very cool. Uh, we've got Scrang over here. Scrang. Another dwarf planet which found at a stable resonance of Tanris at 1 to 3. Cool. Okay. Tanris and Scrang made this one themselves. is by far the strongest. Their rate of orbital periods gives values as close as 0 0.33331. <laughs> nice. Uh, next up we got Arata. Aita. A water world of vast oceans and a few large islands experience warm tropical temperatures year round. It managed to capture a small asteroid into a low orbit where it is stable inside the planet's tiny sphere of influence. That's Mu. There's little Mu. A little bit of the Earth like look alike. There you go. Good, good. We've got Jura. The final Earth analogue has seasonal vegetation. It's kept warm due to the large amount of CO2 in the atmosphere at 3.5%. It has three moons. Um, though two of them seem to be confused about which body they should be orbiting. Alrighty, there they are. We've got big moon Tyros there. We've got two smaller ones. There you go. Looking good. We've got Renak over here. A cold icy desert world which is co-orbital with Tyak. We need to check that one out as well. Uh, the two planets share one small asteroid, Zwicka, which follows a horseshoe orbit between them. So where, where's Tyak? Is that the red trail one? There it is. A fiery world with crushing pressures which is curiously simulated further out than mean as more temperate, temperate planets. There it is underneath. Oh yeah. Cool. So now we're heading to Sion. The largest gas giant in the system has three very large moons that dominate the space near the parent with their lap place like resonance. The resonance gave Darius a molten iron core and Polly a hostile volcanic atmosphere. So there's Polly. Hostile volcanic atmosphere. There it is. Nice colours underneath. Looking very volcanic. And then Darius has a molten iron core, which is this one. 
that's a better look at it. There you go. Nice. Uh, we got. Um, okay, so that's all of those. We got Anil over here. Nice giant. A well developed system of moons and is cold enough to support auction and argon oceans as well as frozen methane. The inner moon's resonance keeps their orbital planes aligned despite the influence of much larger moons nearby. Nice looking ice giant there. So there's all of the moons nearby. Quite a lot going on there, isn't there? There you go. Looking good. Next up, we've got Torona over here. The final planet in the system is in contrast with its neighbour Anil. It has only three moons with asteroids spread throughout, but the system is much more stable than at first glance. The largest moon, Zephrat, has nitrogen oceans and a weak magnetosphere generated by its immense saltwater ocean under the surface. Two asteroids in a 1-2 resonance and another in a retrograde resonance of 1-2. Zephrat has two asteroid moons in a 2-3 resonance, one of which is like Neptune's relationship with Pluto. Ah, uh, okay. Nice. There's some of the moons as well. There you go. There's a larger one there. Uh, that one. Zephret over here. Nitrogen oceans and a weak magnetics here. Generated by cement, salt water, ocean under the surface. Very nice. Okay. So. Oh, that looks like it's everything. Okay. This system as a whole was quite a learning curve. I did find that co-orbital and resonance moons are a convenient tool when it comes to having many large mass moons around a planet and making sure they remain stable. Resonance also keeps moons orbiting in the same plane rather than their orbits spreading over time due to other influences, and it works even with very small objects. The main downside is they can break easy if your computer can't maintain the target sim speed. So they put a hard limit on sim speed if you want them to last. Hopefully you enjoyed and that you can use some of the tricks I use in your own systems. Very nice indeed. Very technical. I like it. That is the uh, Myra Amina system. So there we go, guys. What do you think of that? Like I gotta say, I quite enjoyed that. Actually, it's quite interesting reading about the uh, resonance and all those bits and bobs. So again, a massive thank you to the creator of this system, uh, Phi Felix, for sending this system in. Hope I got your name right there. And yeah, that will send down nobody. Let's even go for 100 likes on today's video as well, guys. Subscribe for more. Helps in the journey to 50,000 subscribers. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.